Hello, my nerds, and welcome back to The Legend of Dragoon, right here on Mistledyne Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Legend of Dragoon video. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. In the last episode of The Legend of Dragoon, we headed to the magical city of Aeglis, where we met the immortal Wingly Savan, who was there to uh, find a permanent solution to the moon that never sets in a way to seal it permanently. Unfortunately for us, and definitely unfortunately for him, Zeke arrived, took over the mind of the last guardian, the last kraken of the Signet Sphere, attacked us, we put it down, but it was too late. The Signet Sphere was destroyed, Savan and all of his magic creatures died, and we pretty much even lost the magical city of Ageless. Lucky for us, though, we were able to teleport here to the lost city of Zinabatos, and even more helpful, we were able to get this creature that is standing flying behind me. This is the wings of Savan, the heart of Savan, Kulon, which will bring us to any city that we want to. In the last episode, you actually saw me go back to Lohan. That was actually to pick up an ultimate war god because I also went and did some grinding off screen. I want to show you some of those results real quick. Dart is now level 35. Alberts is level 31. Kongo is level 32. But more importantly than that, I was able to work on some additions. Moonstrike is maxed out in level-wise. Blazing Dynamo is a final addition for Dart, but I'm not going to switch to it until we get 99 out of 99 here on Moonstrike. But we do have his most powerful uh, addition, finally. Uh, we also got Albert his Flower Storm, which is his final addition as well, uh, which is even better than the Gust of Wind Dance. Miru has learned Cat's Cradle. And Kongol has not only maxed out Bone Crush, meaning he's maxed out all of his additions, but he has also hit Dragoon level 5, meaning he now has his final magic as well. Thought I would take take a moment to say that. But that is why I ended up going to uh, Lohan. It's just to pick up an extra Ultimate War God since I had 10,000 health. Now, in this episode, we are going to tackle uh, the only part of the game. If I had to say there was any bad part of the Legend of Dragoon, my friends, it's this episode. It's this place. Uh, it's the Lost City of Zinabatos is really annoying. Uh, anyways, if we come over here and talk to this this thing here, the law prohibits humans from going to the Signet Sphere. Thus, this flying disc cannot be used. So, is the Signet Sphere ahead? Wingly Code, Article 703. The law prohibits non-Winglies from going to the Signet Sphere. I'm a Wingly. No magic power as a Wingly is recognized. Hey, what do you mean? Wait. It means that my father cannot pass here either. Yeah, that's right. It means we still have time left. Oh, God, that intro killed my voice. Whew, that was like my fifth take of it. I don't know why it was so hard to get out. Felt like it was scripted by the end there. Anyways, the really important thing there that we just learned is that the law that we need to change is Article 703. Keep that in mind. This place is so annoying, but it is entirely about uh, changing the laws that you can find here in Zinabatos. Now, there are a bunch of random encounters here, as well as a save point in case you need to save. Uh, but we are going to talk to this robot here. Warning, under martial law, visitation allowed only to Legislation Center, Law Factory, and Law Launcher, Great Court, Residential Area, Power Room are off limits. Can't we go to the place where the Signet Sphere is? Impossible. The law prohibits humans from going to the Signet Sphere. Impossible. The law prohibits humans from going to the Signet Sphere. It seems it is a waste to talk to them. Let's focus on how we can proceed. Okay. It seems we can decide the destination with this operation counter. Determine the destination. Well, the first place that you want to head anytime that you're changing a law here in Zinabatos is the Legislation Center. Which, yes, that is what this entire area is. is changing the laws so that we can navigate it. And yes, it's as awful as it sounds. Now remember, the article that we saw before was 703. That is pretty important. There are a bunch of different articles here in, in uh, Zinabatos, but I thought that I would just point that out. So let's proceed. And there are, like I said, there are random encounters that we'll be getting into when we get into our first one. So this first area here is going to be pretty much a teleport, but you're gonna see these guards here. We don't wanna get captured by them pretty much at all because they will bring us to a prison level. Now, we eventually do wanna get captured by them, and we're going to grab this chest here, which is a frozen jet. 
And we just want to... You can see that these... Oh, I got caught! Well, you know what? That's fine. Like I said, we wanted to get caught at least once. I'm actually going to be getting caught a few times. Just so that we can kind of skip some some walking. Are, are we arrested? No, what timing? Everybody's feeling the same way. We have to focus on how to get out of here. Huh. Seems that they arrest people and send them here. <sighs> but it seems there is no device to get out of here. Ah, uh, maybe no exit? I don't want to think about a room without an exit. Uh, wait a minute. Didn't we forget somebody? Oh my... Sorry, Kongle is late. Kongle? Why? Why was only Kongle outside? Kongle don't know. It's simple. He was too heavy to teleport. Well, now we can get out. That's rude. Poor Kongle. Anyways, you actually need to do that. One, to see that scene. And two, there are two chests down here that we can pick up. And of course, we have random encounters. The first enemies that we encounter here are Harpies. These are wind-based enemies with 600 health, and they have an 8% chance of dropping a Panic Bell. Most of the time, though, they're just going to hit you with magic uh, attacks. Something to mention as well while we're getting into this is that the enemies here in Zinabatos actually have way less health than enemies that we've encountered in Ageless and other places, uh, but give more XP uh, on average for every battle. So I would just thought I would point that out. Anywho, we want to grab this chest here, which contains a flash hall. We're going to be getting a few magic items that aren't super useful here, but that's okay. 200G, though, I will gladly take that, and we can go ahead and use this here. Now, again, this is the only way to get to the jail is to be captured. You can't get there any other way. So you eventually do need to get captured at least once to get those items, like I think I've said a couple times. Uh, but we can go ahead and use this again. And you'll actually find that getting caught and heading up this way is a faster way of kind of getting around this area than pretty much anything else. Now, what you want to do when you're over here with these guards, obviously, they uh, you want to kind of get them to go... Uh, as soon as they go away, that's when you want to run to wherever you're going. You can actually bait them into coming closer to you. So we'll wait for it to go over there. Perfect. Wait for it to come over here. Great. And then we'll go ahead and run to this platform. See what I mean? You just kind of you just kind of bait them to go certain ways, and they will. Cool. We'll go ahead and grab this chest, which contains a burning wave. And then, of course, we can go ahead and use this here. This one's a kind of weird one. It will go run all the way over there, no matter what. And then it'll come this way. Perfect. And there we go. A relatively small area, actually, on each side here. But, you know, it can be annoying nonetheless. Anyways, we want to head over here and actually get in line. And you can see, punishment for the invasion of Magrod. Law production license is issued. Next deliberation. Wingly veneration law. Any objection to this bill? None thus. Veneration for Wingleys. Law production license is issued. Next deliberation. For service, stand in the center. Is this submission of a bill? No. Is this a revision of the law? Yes, it is. State the number of the article to be revised. Uh... Even we can change the law? It is revised if necessary. State the number of the article to be revised. State the first digit from the left. So we can go ahead and do this. So our digit for this article is seven. Oh. And three. Seven zero three. Wingley code article seven zero three. Deliberation on revision of the law prohibiting non-winglies from going to the signet sphere. Wingly amended code article 703. The law does not prohibit non-winglies from going to the signet sphere. Law production license is issued. Take this to the law factory. And cool. 
next deliberation. So now we have to head out and go all the way back to where we were before. I'd also like to point out that you can't use these over here, even though it kind of looks like you can. Anyways, we'll head over here. You can talk. You can see that they're like talking about, you know, repossessing, repossessing things from humans and uh, retaliating for Fort McGrad. But like, obviously, none of that matters, right? Because of the, the fact that, like, Wingleys are are dead. <laughs> Very interesting that the law in Zinabatos is still functioning and still going on. Ah, back to square one again. Give Kongo a break. That's going to happen now every time that we come back here. But of course, these robots don't know. They don't care, right? So they'll send us to prison, but it doesn't really matter to them. Found people to which Wingley code article 659 applies. Article 659. Interesting. So Article 659 is uh, where the guards will capture you. You can actually turn off that article as well. So all of the guards do not capture you and you will not be sent to jail. Uh, but again, that's just not something that I would do just because it is so much faster to get down here that way than it was to go the other way, right? So we need to go to the law factory now that we have our first piece there. And you'll actually find that there are item shops here. Wingly amended code article 339. Usage by non-winglies of shops is not prohibited. You can actually turn that off as well. Uh, but yes, we're going to go ahead and use these shops. There's a weapon shop and an item shop you can check out here. Uh, which has a great axe for Mr. Kongul. Uh, stuns enemies with a given probability. And a gladius for Rose, which she already has uh, because we got one. But I'm going to go ahead and equip that great axe onto Kongul, which is very good. Now, something else that I want to mention is that we also have a ton of these armors here. Nullifies damage due to fire-based attacks. Uh, nullifies damage due to wind-based attacks. These are for exclusively for each character, right? So we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to equip the um, the the red DG armor because it's actually an increase. The red dragoon armor. In fact, we're going to go ahead and buy one of these for everybody. And perfect. I bought one for everyone and that can anyways. Obviously, we're missing, you know, three dragoons that don't have a, a dragoon armor here. We can also buy panic guards, bravery amulets, d stone amulets, all of those. Uh, although I I wouldn't recommend it. They're not necessarily not necessary blah, 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 right now. And of course, you can also go ahead and talk to this again for the item shop. You have to exit out of the weapon shop to, to choose to talk to the item shop. But that has basically the same items that you could have found any other time. Uh, but I like to just point out what there is. But anyways, continuing on with the law factory. Now, there is something that I really, really want to point out here. And that is that this armor, uh, there are two different places that you can purchase it. One of them is just so far in the future that I don't think it's worth it. Uh, so this would be, I think, the best time to get there, especially if you just want it in your inventory going forward, which which I highly recommend. These items are very useful against some of the the ultimate bosses, the secret bosses, the side bosses that we can actually face in this game. So I just want to keep that in mind. Now, there is an item over here that we can grab. I'm going to go ahead and wait for this guard to go all the way away as far as it possibly can. And then I'm going to run out and hope. Nope, we're not going to make it. All right, I'm going this way. Whoo, got it. Spectral Flash. All right. Whew. I was a little scared of that one, my friends. Anyways. Like I said, this place is pretty simple. We want to go ahead and do that just to make that one go over there. That one's kind of stuck now. He's like, I don't, I don't know where to go. Now, obviously, we could force that one, but there's a chest here that we want to grab. Which contains a night raid. Like I said, you're going to be getting a bunch of magic items that just aren't very useful right now. And then we'll go ahead and use this teleporter to bring us over here. We're going to wait for this one to cross. Perfect. And boom. Nice. We'll go ahead and grab this chest. Which contains a rainbow dress, which is actually super good. Remember, I said that you could have gotten this from the rainbow birds, although it tends to be a pretty rare drop. But the rainbow dress avoids poison, stun, and arm blocking, uh, and also has pretty high magic defense. But again, we just bought we just bought some armor. The only one that doesn't have it is Miranda, so potentially you could equip that on Miranda, uh, which wouldn't be oops wouldn't be the best uh, wouldn't be the worst idea. Anyways, let's try to get this guard over here. Thank you. And boom. 
Nice. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I kind of like the magic effects here. It looks very cool. Anyways, so we want to talk to this here. Submit law production license issued by Legislation Center. Uh, law production license. This should be it. Understood. Launching of law is required for the enforcement of the law. Law launching license is issued. Take this to the law launcher. Cool. Nice. When the process is completed, step back. You are hindering fulfillment of the quota. Complaints shall be brought to the Legislation Center. Uh, okay. That seems rude. Anyways, you can see that there's like... I, it's, it's, it is, don't get me wrong. It is cool, right? Like, like, it is cool. It's just annoying from a gameplay's perspective to do it all. And of course, here, we're just going to get captured because it's just much faster to get captured, go to the jail, and teleport up or whatever than it is to actually, like, run through. Just thought I would point that out. And of course, if you want to see every random encounter in the game, it helps to, well, be sent down. So, right here, we have three or two new enemies. The Professor, two of them, actually. Uh, and we also have the Sky Chaser. The Professor has 869 health and has a 2% chance of dropping the Sage's Cloak. Remember, that's actually pretty good. Can also put a bunch of status afflictions on you, so keep that in mind. As well as uh, camp combat status, which is super annoying. The Sky Chaser has 680 health and has an 8% chance of dropping a body purifier. Also, just not a big deal on the Sky Chaser. I definitely think you should focus the professors over anything else. Anyways, now we want to head to the final area that we can go to, which is the Law Launcher. That, again, that's the only way that now the law, you have to launch the law for it to be enforced, right? So like I said, this can get fairly annoying. And let's go to the Law Launcher. Not too bad of an area. Again, we're going to want to make sure that we get all of these chests. So it can like, I, it can be super, super annoying if... Uh, let's go this way. Thank you. Whoop, 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 whoop. Grab a chest here, which contains a down burst. Again, a useless item. Go ahead and use this here so that we can use this teleporter. Go ahead and grab this, run over here, grab this chest, which contains a spirit cloak, which uh, less useless. And we actually want to wait for that guard to go a different way. Perfect. And then we can run this way. Yes. Follow me, guard. So easy. Run this way. And boom. Grab the final chest that we can grab here, which is a gravity grabber. Gravity, gravity grabber. And then we can go ahead and boom. Let's get out of here. Time to launch a law. Hello? Thank you. <laughs> Look at this. Isn't that awesome, though? It looks like Xenobatos is actually still, still floating, still in the sky. I love it. Wait for your turn. Wait for your turn. Submit law launcher license issued by Law Factory. Uh, law launching license. This should be it. Understood. The law will be enforced. When the process is completed, step back. You are hindering fulfillment of the quota. Complaints shall be brought to the Law Factory. Well, there we go. Our law has been launched. We can officially go to the Signet Sphere. Cool. Let's get out of here. And again, we're going to go want to get captured so we can go back to the beginning. Now, back at the entrance, or where we can at least choose to go, we want to go back to where we went up in the first place. That is actually where we need to go for the Signet Sphere. So I thought I would point that out. There's also more enemies that we can encounter here in Zinabatos, and I want to cover those before we go any further. And perfect! We got both of the remaining enemies in one encounter here, which is... Wasn't expecting that! Anyways, we have the Death Purger here, which is a darkness-based enemy with 583 health and has an 8% chance of dropping a total vanishing. We also have the Guillotine enemy, which is a dark-based enemy with 622 health and has an 8% chance of dropping the Healing Breeze item. Uh, none of these enemies in this area are, you know, worth grinding or doing anything like that, but... I thought I would point them out that they are here. 
Now, something that I should mention is that the Death Purgers in particular should be focused down right away. Uh, and you shouldn't leave them at low health because they, they can use can't combat stats. Cool. I'm glad that I was able to find those two remaining enemies that quickly. So anyways, once we're ready, we want to head up here. The law prohibits humans from going to the Signet Sphere. Uh, I know that, but it should be revised now. No revision has been received. Hey, you! Can't you be more flexible? Maybe my spell's not that strong, but I'm here. Why don't you let us go? The law prohibits humans from going to the Signet Sphere. A world crisis is near at hand. No interest in world crisis. Interest only in compliance with the law. Wingley Code Article 703 revised, enforced immediately. The law does not prohibit non-Winglies from going to the Signet Sphere. It says, does not prohibit. It seems the produced law is launched, arrives, and then is enforced. They are treating laws as if they are commodities. That's all it was anyway. The law was a mere tool to judge other creatures for them, the Winglies. We spent too much time with that tool. We gotta get to the Signet Sphere before my father. Yes, we do. So we can go ahead and actually use... Hello? So we can go now. Can we go? You are at the flying disk station of the teleporting servant device thing. Determine the destination. We only have one destination. The Great Court. The Signet Sphere. We are going, my friends. And they're giving us a save point right here, which, you know, I take that as a sign of saying we should use it. You are at the flying disc station of the Great Court. The Signet Sphere should be in here. Signet Sphere, Signet Sphere, Signet Sphere, Signet Sphere, Dart, Rose, Albert, Hatchel, Miru, Kongol, and Miranda, total seven. Confirmed, accused. Uh, accused? What is it saying? You are at the flying disc station in front of the Great Court. It's a waste to ask. Anyways, let's go ahead and save. Now, we also have what a lot of people consider to be a very difficult boss fight coming up. So, I want to make sure that we replace uh, Albert and Hatchel here with uh, Miru and Miranda as per use. Also, I think that they just fit in here with Miru being a wingly. Uh, anyways, I want to make sure that Miranda has the talisman equipped, which she does. Uh, and I'm also going to go ahead and get take the dancer shoes off of our dear... Uh, Miru so that she can actually uh, So that Miranda can have those equipped now normally I would love to have the magical ring equipped here because it would raise her magic to 233 uh, But we're gonna keep her with the talisman trust me It's going to be super super needed in this boss fight that we have coming up. So let's proceed to the great court You're gonna want trust me you're gonna want talismans Where are we? It's the court of Xenobatos it is the place where judgment is passed for non-winglies under the name of fake justice. And still now... Guilty, 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 guilty. My name is Gobos. I am the justice. My word is the only truth. We are here to protect the Signet Sphere. Let us go through here. Accused guard. Rose, Albert, Agile, Miranda, Miru, and Kongo. It seems you know we are here for the Signet Sphere. And you are trying to intervene. Why? Accusation. The will of the creator. So, uh... It's not working. Oh, no. Is this manipulated by my father? Thus, the death penalty is sentenced. Come out, winged executioners, Hector, Celibus, Kabira... Stop the execution. And here we go, the battle against the three winged executioners of the ancient winglies. Who knows how many of the ancient races that these three themselves killed all in the name of this fake justice here in Cinebatos. And now we get to bring the justice to them. We have the three winged executioners. Vector sitting here in the middle with his tiny wings sitting with about 3,000 health. Actually, maybe even a little bit, about 3,500. We have Celibus here with all of her winged glory sitting with uh, 3,000 health. 
and Kubilla with about 4,500. I know this because I've done this fight so many times today trying to figure out the best way to bring it to you guys. And uh, the best way to bring it to you guys is, is to talk about what these enemies do and how I'm not going to deal with it at all because, well, this fight is super easy. We're going to use the power up on Miranda. Miranda's going to end the fight. That's it. That's legit. Uh, Victor in the middle there, uh, he's not your priority target. Your priority target is actually going to be the Celibus right here. Uh, Celibus has an ability that's super annoying. She can petrify members of your party, which actually denies them any experience, which is super annoying. Also has a light-based attack that will hit everybody in the party for about 600 damage. Also uh, can heal her party members and also can enlarge Victor in the middle so that he will attack more. And he uses like this eat. He'll like pick somebody up and eat them. Uh, and it does, a, it does a lot of damage uh, all because of Celibus. So I would say Celibus is your priority target with about 3,000 health. Then I would actually focus on Kubilla here because Kubilla is going to be the one dishing out the most damage. Has a bunch of different spells, including one where he summons a gremlin, which is super cool looking and hits everybody with bubbles and it does damage. It's like a squirtle attack. I don't know. Uh, also, whenever any of the executioners die, Kubilla will use a can't combat attack, an instant death attack, which is why Miranda has a beautiful, beautiful talisman so that hopefully she isn't the one to die. Anyways, that's pretty much the fight you'd want to save uh, Victor for last, but I'm going to go ahead and with Dart, I'm going to use an addition here on uh, Celibus since we already used... We already used the power up on Miranda. Miranda's actually going to end this fight in one turn, no joke. Ah, we get to see an attack from Celibus. This is awesome. I'm so glad uh, because they really do have some awesome looking attacks. And I would have felt really bad if we didn't see any of them. Victor's the only one that doesn't. But look at that. Isn't that so creepy? All of like the hands coming out. Blah, 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 blah. It's gross. Oh, such a cool attack. That actually did not do nearly as much as I thought it would. All right, and we get to see the Book of, of Prophecy from Kubilla there. Great, we're seeing moves. This is awesome. Uh, that is just going to be a magic-based attack on a party member or maybe all three party members. Beautiful. I love it. Absolutely love it. And now Miranda's turn to end the entire fight with our brand new Psych Bomb X. Two hundred and twenty-eight percent, I believe. That will be enough to finish the entire fight. Thirty-six hundred damage to Kabila, five thousand damage to Victor. Enough damage to definitely seal the seal the deal for Celibus. And here we go. This is his desperation move. He'll call a gravestone into the into the party, and of course, it's going to land on Miranda because she's the one that's immune to it, baby. Done. No, you're done. Yeah. And there you go. The three ancient executioners of the Wingleys have been defeated. That is how easy that fight is, my friends. Absolutely unbelievable. And trust me, this is like my eighth time recording this. Just because I, I didn't know I didn't know how best to... Do I just destroy them easily? Or do I take my time and show you everything? I decided that, you know what? This fight's really easy, really simple. So we'll just, we'll just do it the easiest way. 300 gold and 12,000 experience for our beautiful, beautiful party. Meaning everybody leveled up. Dart 36, Miru 34, Miranda 33, Hashel 31. And that's it. Nobody else in our party. It would have been great if they actually hit Dart with a, with a Petrify or an instant death. Master, hurry to the god. Rebels against Sala's will overcome me. Master? The Signet Sphere is over there. Let's go. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta go. Look at how cool this is, though. The the Grand Court destroyed. Oh, there's random encounters here. Oh no, I don't want one. Anyways, with them defeated, nothing is going to stop us from saving the Signet Sphere. The Signet Sphere. He's done it. It is losing its magic power. This Moon Dagger is serving as proof. How on earth did he get here? Now, the sky is one of my roads, too. Father! Can you hear the movements of the God of Destruction as if a hymn to the new world? It sounds like an outcry of the world to me. 
With the outcry, Shana will be reborn to the god who no longer knows you. Ah! Oh! She desires that too. She does not! You'll see when you meet her. <laughs> but for Shana, you're a mere object to be destroyed. Wait! He is not Zeke. Then who is he? We'll find out in the city of the last signet sphere. I will in Mayfield. He's not Zeke. I mean, I get being like, oh no, not my Zeke, but like, come on. Anyways, the signet sphere, that is two out of three stopping the moon that never sets from becoming the Virage embryo gone. We have failed so far real hard in our job, but hey, at least we defeated, you know, three evil executioners, no big deal. But we're not done here just yet, my friends. No, no, no. We still... Listen, I know. I know this is going to sound horrible and everyone's going to cry, especially me. Uh, but we need to head back. You could save if you so chose, but uh, I don't really think we need to. Right now, we're going to leave the Signet Sphere in the Great Court. We're going to go back to the teleport area. Uh, and, well, we're going to find out some really bad news, my friends. So, when we get back here, obviously we want to use the teleporter. So, why don't we head down... Oh, come on! Anyways, once we head down here, we're going to want to use this room. But if we talk to this guy... Martial law is relaxed. Revision is required to move to Death City Mayfield. Uh, what do you mean? Wingley Code, Article 410, setting of the teleporting device. Connection to Death City Mayfield shall be disconnected. Wait, wait, wait. So, can we not go to Mayfield? Yeah, my friends, that's the that's the bad news. All we can do is go back to Ageless, but we can't we can't go to Mayfield yet. No, no, no. What we have to do, I know. Don't get listen. Don't get mad at me. I'm just the messenger. We have to redo everything that we did for the first part. We have to launch a revision to the new law. Do you see why? Do you see why this place is sticky poo poo? <laughs> because now we need to do this all over again lucky for you though you don't have to watch it first stop is the legislation center yet again and we need to get in line because that's still a thing remember the article that we need is 410 ah unbelievable that we have to do all of this all over again what a stink we answer yes because they asked if this is a revision and then we just need to state the first digit so it is 410 my friends now, I also wanted to mention that there are other articles that you can change. Article 339 turns off shops. Don't do that. Article 410, which is the one we're doing, allows us to go to Death City Mayfield. 640 means that we don't have to wait in line here. 666 turns off all monster encounters in the city, but you can only do that after the bosses have been beaten. 659 turns off all the guards, so you can't be sent to jail anymore. And, of course, the last one being 703. Those are all the articles that you can actually mess with here in... Uh, in, in uh, Zinabatos. Setting of the teleporting device connection to Death City Mayfell shall be disconnected. Wingley amended code article. Setting of the teleporting device connection to Met Death City Mayfell shall not be disconnected. Law production license is issued. Take this to the law factory. And to the law factory we go. Remember, again, it is much faster to go ahead and get caught by the guards, go to jail, and then do it all over. But that's it. You don't need to see anymore. I'll cut ahead. Don't worry. And with that, we are finally done with this convoluted city. And the law has been launched, and we can now take the teleporter all the way to the Death City Mayfield. Uh, which, if we talk to this guy, we can see that shall not be disconnected. So if we come over here and talk to Kaloon, he'll ask, Where is the destination? Please go to Mayfield. Dad must be heading there. The sky over Mayfield is filled with swirling souls. I don't think I can make it with my newborn wings. What? Then how should we go? You should be able to go with the teleporting device. Oh! Yeah, okay, that makes sense. We can go over and... Boom! Warp to Mayfield, which we will do in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Uh, apologies if it was super long. And, uh, and I, I, tried to, I tried to do it as best as I could and get the entirety of Zinabatos in one video. And I think I was able to do that. The next video... We are heading to Mayfill, and my friends, after Mayfill, that's it. Like, like we are at the final, after Mayfill is the final destination, which 
We're not going to go there just yet because obviously I have a ton of grinding to do. I need to make sure that all of the optional bosses are defeated. Every possible thing that can happen needs to be done before we head to the final place in the entire game. So uh, it, that obviously will be happening, but I, I, I just wanted to point out that we are fastly approaching the end of this game. Thank you so much for watching. Huge shout out to those of you watching the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I sincerely appreciate you guys. And remember, never give up. Never surrender to the three-winged executioners.